Welcome back to Well That Didn't Work's Legend of the Five Rings Warrior's Path campaign. Last time, um, and we'll just do a brief overview view because we are doing like a, a live deal right now, but uh, Miramoto got shot at. <laughs> and that's where we're going to pick up. That's not very nice. Um, everybody How does else... it feel? I'm, very rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Udell. Don't shoot at me. Everybody else was doing stuff. Um, Kakita and Isawa were on their way to Akoto Arasu's encampment. And uh, Lady Utaku was chasing down uh, Magistrate Hida, uh, trying to figure out what his whole deal is. Uh, but Miramoto's being shot at. That's the important thing right now. So, uh, Miramoto, go ahead and roll me a uh, big bad tactics check. I guess I should have taken some tactics, huh? Yep, you can choose the ring, but this is going to be combat. Uh, so, if you want to flip to the tactics page that I handed you, that it's on the other side of the dueling, it'll kind of give you an idea of like what is available to you um, in doing that. Now, I will say this. Doing support actions... Um, this is a kind of thing that I've found uh, just on, on searching like opportunities and stuff. Um, when making a support action, there's one of these um, checks that lets you increase your initiative. I can't remember which ring it was. Yeah, I can't remember which ring it was, but there was one ring that lets you... Uh, increase your initiative by spending opportunity while you're in that ring. So you guys look that up for me uh, while we go. But for now, uh, Rick, go ahead and make your tactics check. Choose your ring uh, that you're going to be in. Well, I tend to stay. I try to um, stay fire in the stance, earth ring. Just hold on one second. Fire stance says under initiative, use your focus instead of your vigilance when surprised. Ooh, interesting. Right. That's well, that's one. that's, that's uh, a good one. So I'm assuming I was surprised. You definitely were surprised. Now that's from an opportunity. That does. That's just right. Well, that's initiative. If we roll initiative, and well, I'm but it's saying classroom. you can spend an opportunity during initiative to use vigilance instead of, or use focus instead of vigilance. Correct. Mm -hmm. If you're using fire. Ring. Oh, if you have an opportunity. Okay. Yes. So you want me to do a tactics check? Yes. Oh yeah, some of these are pretty interesting. Um, I'm probably going to start out in the firing if I'm surprised because this is gonna anger me I mean it would throw me off a little bit okay so there's um, I got one two three four let's see three four five six successes um, I probably don't need six successes for tactics um, how, what did I need to to hit? It's a uh, target number one. Okay. Well, and then, then you take your bonus successes, and you'll add those to your your um, uh, vigilance value for initiative. Yes. In that case, we'll unless you take since, them all, since you already rolled your explosive, <laughs> the only one you couldn't keep at that point is the the is the, the the one you got from the explosion. Correct. You have to choose to keep before oh, you roll right, the explosive. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. So, um, ah, good point. Um, okay, we'll take the six successes. Okay, so and you got six. Strive. So, um, what is your vigilance? My vigilance is two. So two plus five, so you have a seven, seven. initiative. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, let's see. If Sorry, I'm rolling their initiatives. I should have probably pre-rolled these. But now we're here, so... Make them up. <laughs> well, that's no fun for anybody. All right, and then let's roll for Icoma. Well, see, Percy, that's fun for everybody because then at that point in time, it's really just an interesting situation that happens. You know, like Lord Dakota and his 25. 
<laughs> That's true. All right, so uh, Ikoma catches um, this arrow in his fan. Uh, not like it doesn't go through the fan. He kind of catches it in the folds and right. then lets it drop. And then uh, he is going to kind of do this leaping maneuver over you. And uh, there are, as you turn to look at like who fired at you, uh, you see one bandit with a bow and arrow. Um, or not a bandit, one individual. I'm just looking at the, the bandit card, but it's not a bandit. Uh, one individual with a bow and arrow standing kind of off to the side of one of the homes nearby, uh, kind of across from the shack that you guys just pulled that fruit out of, uh, or the stand, rather. But you do see another individual kind of coming toward you guys. He doesn't have a weapon drawn, but he does look really suspicious, and you have a feeling that Icoma's been watching him during the conversation, uh, or watching these people. And so he's going to kind of do a leap over you. I'm going to have him make a fitness check. Uh, to kind of use his hand to, like, you're ducked. Mm. He's going to place his hand on your shoulder and leap and slash with his fan mm. um, to try to hit this guy. And he is in the fire ring. The only appropriate ring for my NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> so he, one, two, We're three, four, five. Different. He hits with five. Well, I mean, it was water for the guys in our offline game. Um, I rude that day. You did. <laughs> you did rude that day. Um, so he comes across, and this uh, individual like tries to pull out just a small knife. Uh, it's it's more like a kitchen knife than it is anything else that's like actually threatening. And uh, he knocks it out of the guy's hand, and he stumbles backward. He takes five uh, fatigue over five endurance, so he's going to be kind of out of the fight he looks horrified um that this person who like he was just this he was a samurai but he doesn't have a die show he's just holding a fan just eating a pear uh, and he leapt into action so quickly that it it really took all the gusto out of this <laughs> individual and then we're gonna move to uh your turn miramoto <clears throat> okay um And you rolled fire ring, so that's what you're I rolled fire ring. So you won't you won't be able to do your like earth fist technique. No. Because you have to roll earth theology. No. What I will do is I will um and there's the guy the, so there's still the guy with the arrow. Yeah. With the bow and arrow. And yes, he sir. is within range for me to I mean he's in bow and arrow range. Well, I know, but that's pretty long. So is he within range for me to get to? Uh, I'm gonna say he's range? he is three range bands away from you. So I could move one range band. Uh, yes. Yeah, for free. And then you can take an action to move again. Okay, also. and I am going to clench my fists and stare at the sky, and basically uh, a red aura is going to flow down my body. Okay. Okay, um, and I will seem to be re resonating at an extreme amount of heat. All right, K.O. Ken, I love it. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, so what yeah. what is this move that you're doing? I'm doing uh, my body is an anvil. Basically, I'm t <laughs> turning my body on fire. Okay, sounds okay. good. And it's got a burst effect of two. Okay, so what is what is the target number initially? Um, the target number initially is target number three. Target number three, Meditation. fire check. Meditation, fire check. Yes. Okay, cool. So what did you get initially? Like um, what, what are you keeping? Let's go ahead and determine that. Okay, well, I'll keep. So you need three, right? Yes. I really don't want more strife, but I want the explosive success. So all I can keep is three to begin with, or I just mm -hmm. what is your what is your fire ring? Three. Yes. Do, 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 now remember, you're you're rolling fire, so strife counts as success. That is true. All right. All right, so um, and these were off the explosive die, so mm -hmm. I get to keep those. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that but was you don't have to keep dice. those, right? Um, but there's no reason not to. 
Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six success. Okay. Now, oh, but I can't. Oh, I kept that as an explosive, so I got to keep that. Okay, so I got six success. So, um, any opportunities? And I got two opportunities. Okay, and I believe is it the opportunity or successes that activate it's the, the opportunity. burst effects? Okay, so you need two opportunities. What you got? And um, I so choose a character. Is what is the initial effect? The initial effect is basically my body uh, becomes on fire, and I anything that anyone that attacks me takes damage. Okay. Okay. How much damage equal uh, to your fire ring? I'm assuming it will equal to my fire ring, and they'll and the day's condition. So they'll become okay. dazed if they attack me. Now, of course, I'm shoot, I'm assuming shooting me with a bow is probably not going to trigger that. But, yeah, probably not. Um, and, and then what is the burst effect? The burst effect... And I don't have it written down here. I think it uh, damages... What's the name of this? Its body is an anvil. It's on page 241, I believe. No, nope, that's snaring. Okay, burst effect. If you have two or more bonus successes. Oh, that one's different. Before you defend against damage dealt by the target, reduce the damage by your fire ring. If you successfully defend against the damage, uh, one weapon the target used gains the damage quality. Nice. Uh, so activation, da -da -da, you may choose a character in range 0 to 2 as the target for the burst effect. So I'm assuming the target is going to be this. The guy with the bow. guy with right. the bow, perfect. If you succeed, this keyhole activates. While this key is active, you defend against damage from an attack action. Um, the character who attacked you suffers supernatural damage equal to your fire ring and the dazed condition. Perfect. Okay, so I'm hoping to take his bow out. Yeah, so I think you would, it'd be hard to take his bow out. If you have two or more bonus successes before you defend against damage dealt by the target, reduce the damage by your firing. So basically when he shoots an arrow at you, before it would hit you, it has to go through your fire ring before it could deal damage. And his bow now has the damaged condition. I don't know that your fire would lick out two range bands. It's, it says it does. Choose a character range zero to two. So it goes out. Well, that's the target range. for the burst effect. If you successfully defend against the damage, one weapon the target used <clears throat> suffers the burning gains condition. the damaged quality, and the target suffers the burning condition. So basically, I'm shooting a bolt of fire from my body at someone in a zero to two range, like a sunspot, basically. Yeah. So as long you're right, yeah, yeah. As long as they're mm -hmm. within two range bands, yes. Right, and I moved one range. Band okay, you to moved up. Him. Okay, yeah. I didn't know him. that you moved. Yeah, because it was three range bands. I and you said I could move one. So cool, I, cool. Perfect. I, I leap past uh, Sakawa, or not, uh, and. Uh, yeah, you just kind of went went toward um, this individual with the bow. You just you know your limitations, so you went close enough to where right. I went past you would have that defensive and targeted this guy specifically. Perfect. With obviously so much more success than I needed, and the two uh, the two <laughs> opportunities, I'm going to remove two strife. Okay. Which is actually just one strife. Sounds good. Okay. All righty. Uh, I'm next. now on fire. You are now on fire. That is correct. Uh, well, this is not going to deter this bandit directly. Um, they are still going to shoot another arrow at you. Now, that that bow having the damaged condition... So it doesn't automatically happen. It says when you defend against them, which you haven't defended against them yet, then that's, that's when this will happen. Yeah. It doesn't automatically just hit their bow. If you had that set up in the first attack, you would have done it. But since... Correct. Um, it does now when they attack me when yeah. it when I get attacked they take five three five not when when they when they attack yeah, they take so the three you, fire yeah. but the burst effect which is triggered when I do a movement or a support action yep. that's when it lashes out no. and if it's successful the weapon gains the damage condition the uh, no, no 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 as a movement or support action you activate this ability the burst effect reads exactly this way 
if you have two or more bonus successes before you defend against damage dealt by the target, which he hasn't dealt any damage to you. Oh, then reduce see. the damage by your firing. If you successfully defend against the damage, one weapon the target uses gains the damaged quality. Okay. okay. And the target suffers the burning condition. Okay, fair enough. Okay, because I've only got part of it typed right. out here. Yeah, okay. sure, 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 sure. Makes total sense. Trying to get shorthand, uh, and then you shortchange yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no, actually, I was going to give myself a bonus. Well, that's, you know, that's true. Okay. That is true. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So he is going to shoot an arrow at you. One, two successes. One is explosive. Blank. And does anybody know the damage for a bow? I don't have it on hand. A the uh, the Yumi one is yeah. going to be five damage, three deadliness. Okay, so five, six, seven, eight damage, or Ooh. seven damage. No, Ouch. it's target number two, so six damage. You defend against three of that. I remove three. Yes. And then it has to go through your armor as well, whatever that is. And then he is going to take three fire damage. Yeah, I don't believe I have any armor. I have a robe. Yeah, which would defend against supernatural damage, but not physical damage. Right. So so he did uh, seven, three, so... F- three. Three so damage. So he, he did six total, but you reduce it by three for your fire. So you burn up part three. of the arrow as it comes through you. Absolutely. Okay. So I take three wound, and he takes, and he suffers the dazed condition, too. Yep. <clears throat> yep. He and suffers he three, three damage. Uh, and, and a burning condition. Um, yes. All right. Uh, next, there is another individual kind of sneaking around behind um, this another stall. Uh, he comes around the corner, and he's going to go for Icoma. Uh, with another small knife. He gets two successes. He would He's going to deal three damage to Ikoma, uh, who, of course, whips around, grabs the knife with his fan, uh, and diverts the attack. He doesn't disarm him. Um, but he is, of course, going to take the normal fatigue. Uh, and then it's going to be back to his turn where he is going to reciprocate with an attack of his own. Uh, He takes one, two, three successes there. One is explosive. Four, five, six successes. He um, thoroughly trounces this individual. Uh, He diverts the knife. Um, He does actually reach up with his other hand, pushes that wrist out of the way, and slaps him with the the metal beads on the fan. Uh, And the guy just kind of spins around and falls to the ground. Uh, and then we're back to your turn. Okay. So um, does this thing this thing stays active, or I have to reactivate it every time? Or once it's active, it stays active? I think it stays active. I think so, too. So I'm going to... I don't know to... for how long, but I think it stays active. Okay, I am going to... What page was it on? Spin around. Uh, body is an anvil. It's a fire keyhole. So I'm not sure uh, what page it's on. Um, but I'm going to spin around, and I am going to. Uh, my fists are going to start glowing molten red, and I'm going to. Uh, you got all these fire moves. Oh yeah. You started out as an earth boy. You were like, I'm going to be centered and balanced, and then nope, never mind. Oh, Fire's no, 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 the way no, to go. No, I, 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 I was <laughs> always torn. Them all. Burn them all. I, I was always torn. My anger and the fire that burns inside me. He is, learned from. He learned from uh, Sawa. And here I am, a phoenix <laughs> going after void stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, that actually makes, that sense. makes sense to <laughs> some degree. Okay, so do I take in order to move? Now he's two range bands away. Mm-hmm. In order to move that range, uh, an extra range band, does it? Uh, can you do that, or can you only move one? So, if you were in the water ring, you could move two for free. But I'm not. But I'm you're not. Fire so range. you only get one range band for free. Now, what is your your move? What's the range on it? What's what's this new one called? Um, this is it's called breaking blow. Target range zero to one. Okay, perfect. So you move one range band because you're at two right now? Oh, I see. So I can reach one range band. Yes. Uh, 
All right, and his weapon is already damaged? Yes, it is. Okay, so... And... Dang, I'm rolling a lot of explosive successes. It's a good night. That's good. Yeah. yeah. yeah that is. Um, so, uh, you want to know how long it lasts? Yeah. Until he uses another keyhole, until you choose to end it, or until the end of the scene. Okay, oh, so until I use another key. So essentially, by you using this if one, if I use another key ho, yes. okay, well then I won't. I'll just. No, I I'll, think you're you're gonna you're gonna finish this guy off with one hit right here. Okay. So basically, like you you body is an anvil. You light your whole body on fire. So the scene actually looks really really cool. You light your whole body on fire. He shoots an arrow at you. You light him on fire <laughs> in return, <laughs> and then you kind of take a couple steps closer to him and Superman punch him right in the chest. Uh, all of the fire going from your feet up into one fist for this one pound, and you deal how much damage? I deal one, two, three, four, five, six damage. Well, what's the target number of the move? Uh, one. Okay, so, so you'll do the bonus successes. So five plus your fire ring, I'm assuming? Yep. Yeah, so you uh, you catch this dude's garments on fire, <laughs> um, and he uh, crumples to the ground unconscious. And, um, yeah. And now this damages, I'm not sure how much this, this, uh, this damages items, too. Yeah, well, I mean, you can snap his bow if you would like to well, for I narrative could, effect. I could, actually, with what I rolled, I could break the wall. Um <laughs> So, and uh, we got one, so I'll only take one strike from all that. Okay, so I, I knock him through the wall. Okay, you sure you want to do that? <laughs> oh, good. I get to talk to him about restraint. <laughs> well, all my characters have to break at least one wall. That's true. So you you hit him, and he uh, falls through the wall of this stall, uh, shattering it, of course, um, very effectively. And uh, you look around, and you see that for the most part. Uh, whatever this was is uh, no longer a threat. These guys are all on the ground, and it's just three people. Um, and the one that uh, had initially been hit by a coma, the one who had just kind of fallen in fright, who is still conscious, uh, looks suddenly very terrified. He looks down at his hand as if, like, <clears throat> how did I even get a knife? And uh, he uh, prostrates himself hands and knees in front of you and says honored, honored samurai please, i don't i don't i don't know what's happening please it did what's what is go what is going on please honored sa samurai oh and i'm a dead man are they dressed in black no no they're just dressed in they're just normal i'm gonna do a sentiment check on him um, uh what are you trying to surmise whether he says he doesn't know what's going on is he telling the truth is he under some sort of control um, and first I'm taking a calming breath. I think, uh, okay, go, go, go for your calming breath. I mean, go ahead and lower your fatigue and strain by one each. Um, in fact, the, the encounter itself is over, so you can drop your strain down to half of your composure if you're over that. Uh, I was close, but I don't think I was over. No, so you can definitely exactly calming breath to, to drop it by one. And it drops one fatigue and one. Uh-huh. Um... I, th I, just, I think there's no risk in you making the roll, so I'm not going to have you make a check for the sentiment there. Um, he is definitely visibly horrified, and whether or not he's under supernatural control or was just convinced to do this, uh, you can visibly tell he did not want to do it. Okay. I think, I, I think something other than sentiment would be required to tell what made him do it. Okay. Um. I think what you see, though, um, a coma. You see. Uh, let, let me let me describe this to you. Um. On the one that you knocked through the wall, so you kind of notice this guy is, he's pleading. Obviously now, uh, you look back at the one that you had punched through the wall of the stall, and um, you see that on his left ankle. 
there is a, a marking. And it sort of vanishes as you watch it. Now you can roll a theology check with void. I'm going to do a meditation check with void. Uh, I don't. Tagashi's insight. Tagashi's insight won't tell you anything about this thing because what okay. t- what Tagashi's insight does is it it makes, makes me, me give you a direction. And a direction. This okay. isn't a direction. This is you okay. noticing a detail. All right. So what should I roll theology? So say? theology plus void. <laughs> Uh, success and two opportunity. Awesome. So, um, what you see on this marking is sort of the artistic symbol of the void. Okay. And you see, um, it's almost like mixed in that symbol is an eye. So, like, the void already kind of gives that appearance, but intermingled in that is like a it, it looks distinctly more ocular so uh because one of the things that it does is uh, detect a sign of the supernatural and mm-hmm. more opportunities spent reveal a more precise location hmm so you got two opportunities at uh any check with two opportunities gain insight into the nature of the universe or your own mm-hmm. heart at GM discretion, reveal an, an as yet unknown fact about your character that relates to the current situation. Um, I'm going to say this. I'll, I'll say you recognize this as being a secondary symbol that you had seen on that uh, dragon priestess's robes. Hey. So I've seen this before. You have. Yeah, and you didn't realize you had seen it before? Uh, like you had kind of noticed, like, oh, she's got a void symbol on her robes. Cool, she's a priestess. It makes kind of sense. This is kind of her specialty is being centered. Um, and it's an eye. But it looks distinctly like an eye. Like it's a void symbol, but it's got like... Basically, it's it's the void is like the iris and pupil, and then it's got the, the corners of an eyeball. Okay. Do I have any idea whether this would... I don't think you would. Okay. I wish you did, because I'm very excited for what it is. <laughs> but I don't think that naturally you would. Uh, and I think at this point, let's shift back over to Kakita and Isawa as you kind of make this recognition. Hey, guys. What's up? <laughs> Good um, evening. Yeah. Uh, so you're walking with Lord Okoto um, and talking just kind of, I don't know, what, what would you be talking to a Lord of the Lion about? Uh, with us, probably D. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and now that you've noticed that he is a, a fan, fan of the aromatic, you guys may even be talking about what you can brew for him when you get back to the to the camp. But what makes lion tea unique among all the clans? I have very little experience with lion tea, so I'm very interested to learn about that. from. Sure. As you guys approach the lion camp, uh, you see a massive open battlefield. Uh, Whatever happened here was disastrous and, dare I say, monstrous. Um, You see bodies, decaying bodies, strewn throughout the encampment. Uh, And about half of Lord Okoto's forces have been depleted. Uh, you can see them all kind of dressing wounds, and, and the battle is definitely over. Um, but mixed among them, you see more of these crane. You see more of these strange soldiers. And the air is tense, but they're not fighting each other. And in the midst of the entire thing kind of standing more leaning in between the two and like you can see clearly like the closer you get the lion are sifted to like the left and these pseudo crane are sifted to the right you see Grio Rico Mm. leaning upon a a very large I almost said Tessin that's not the right one Tetsubo Mm. I 
I, I think that he can wait. You can see as you grow closer and closer that he is bleeding himself from several wounds. Um, but you can also get a sense that he is the one standing in the middle keeping current peace. What do you do? So let's proceed up to him. Who do you know who this is? We have met before. I see. He is Giro. He is a Ronin who has turned from his clan, a former champion, and now takes up what he likes to call the Wolf Clan. And he, he kind of puts his hand over his eyes as if to peer at him. I, I do recognize... Is that... I saw you fight. I knew I knew you, Isawa Ari. Hi. And he, he kind of smacks his leg. Wow. It is so rare for me to see someone who... Well, any anybody who... I, there are so many samurai and... Sure, I've probably killed one or two people who competed in the Topaz Championship, but to have communed with the Shugenja of your nature and your stature, it is it is an honor to be near you again. To even have competed in the championship is a, a great deal. I'm sure you feel this. Again, Akita-sama, the honor is mine to be in Akodo. your presence. Akita-sama. <laughs> Akita is a battle angel. Well, that's right. Sorry. That's Alita. That, that's Alita. That's Alita. You're right. I'm wrong. <laughs> Work with me here, all right? <laughs> These names are hard. <laughs> you said his he goes by Grio now? Yes. He was at the championship known as Hito. Yes, I, I recognize the Tetsubo. In my opinion, he has turned his back on his family. Perhaps. And dishonored himself. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry. And made many, many noises. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please repeat that. <laughs> repeat what you were just saying so that I can cut this out later. <laughs> okay. In my opinion, he has turned himself from his family and dishonored himself and his clan. Perhaps. It looks as though he uh, owes me a bit of recompense, but we will see the truth of what has happened here today. If I may be of service at any point during this, consider it yours. Please commune with the Kami on my behalf once we get to the battlefield so that we can determine from their vantage point, what happened here. I would be honored to. Thank you, Isawa. And uh, you guys approach this encampment, and Grio kind of stands up uh, more straight <coughs> and uh, brushes off some blood-soaked dust that had caked onto the front of his kimono and says, Well, well. It's about time you got back here, Okoto. I was hoping to fight you man to man, and it looks like your people needed more help. Where where were you? What are, is that? Do I know you? And he points at you, Kikita. We have met. <laughs> well, in what circumstance? You don't look like I fought you because you aren't beaten up very badly. Neither are you. No, that's... <laughs> Hello, Topaz. I won. I'm good at what I do. But you... You... You're the duelist. You're the angry duelist that wanted to fight me. Right? What am I saying? That's every duelist. I, I can't believe I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Anyway, I do I do recognize you. We've met recently. I'm so sorry that I don't remember really how we encountered one another, but... In the woods. At your encampment. Oh, you Zero. guys fought the bear. 
right? Yes. <sighs> well, it's good to see that you've uh, decided to keep good company, good strong company. I mean, uh, who doesn't need Lord Okoto to protect them? <laughs> so I think you guys have got to yeah. roll something to not take some strife <laughs> right now. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I've been tilted. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's four strife coming your way. Um, oh, wouldn't have bothered. Me. I unmask. <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead and roll a uh, courtesy check. Uh, you can choose the ring. Okay. <laughs> fire. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking fire as well. <laughs> okay. And remember, each opportunity you roll here, can you can use to retort against him to cause him to mm. more strife. But I need you to make up the retort. How'd it go, guys? Two success and an opportunity. Okay, were either of those successes strife? Yes. <laughs> How many of them? <laughs> One. Okay. <laughs> so you ignore two strife, but you take one strife. I'm in fire ring. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then the opportunity, right. uh, what do you want to say to him to make him take two strife? Or if you wanted to do something else with the opportunity, like ignore a strife, you could do that as well. But no, I think I'd take the strife. But um... <clears throat> at least we travel with company that honors a real clan. And Kakita, how did you do? I got a total of four successes and opportunity. Two of those were strife. Okay. So you'll wind up ignoring two you know, strife. Ignore two of those, yeah. Well, technically, you ignore all of his insult. Yes. You just take two personal strife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you beat yourself this. up about it. <laughs> You're really pretty bad pretty about what this slam is coming, but he deserves it. <laughs> That's right. And you said you got one opportunity. Yep. And what do you say to him? It is always an honor to fight alongside someone as worthy as General Lakota. Ah, the slight being that he is unworthy. Yes. I see what you're saying. I see where you're going. Okay. Um. Well, I see you You guys have definitely uh, not grown, but it's fine. Um, Okoto, we've got bigger fish to fry uh, than petty squabbles among smaller samurai. Um, this thing, this thing that attacked your people, that uh, I defended against your welcome... Um, It was horrifying. It was like, and I, I hesitate to say it, but it was like an oni made of other people's bodies. It was like a golem created by the bodies of the dead. And I don't think I've ever seen anything. I lived on the wall. My family has defended Rokugan from things like this for years, decades, centuries. And I've never seen this. I'd like to make a fire theology okay. using my cynicism anxiety against this. Okay, sounds sounds good. <coughs> to see if um, I can have any clue what he's talking about. Yes, I will Or if have he's to. just talking out of his ass. Yeah, sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> His donkey talking out of his donkey. Language. <laughs> I, it just slipped out. Yeah, but that's just I a, heard that is actually another ass, term so for a donkey. So it not is not even okay. the full word. I just heard S. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go for it. Alrighty. So 
That's going to be one, two successes with an opportunity. Awesome. Or two opportunities. Okay, great. Um, are you What ring are you rolling in? I'm in fire. Okay, perfect. Um, you can tell me what the opportunities you want to be, but the, the thing he's describing is a... Uh, a fleshier version <laughs> of the Gasha de Kuro. Gasha de Kuro. That explains it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would have assumed it was the Gasha de Kuro. <laughs> yes. The Gasha de Kuro is an enormous skeleton, uh, in this case a fleshy skeleton, <laughs> uh, composed of the melded bones of the unburied dead. Let me see. It's said to be as much as 15 times the height of a human. Oh my gosh. Would we have not all seen this thing? Uh, well, the mist obscured most of it. Okay. Uh, I mean, like, they couldn't see more than 20 feet away from themselves during the battle that they were in. Um, and the whole area is still under this mist. Right, but even people from the wall and stuff might have... If it's that tall... <laughs> you, would, you would think. <laughs> but perhaps it didn't come directly from the wall. You know, like, no, 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 I'm talking about people in Toshi Rambo. On the walls, oh, no. there. Like I said, like seen. I guess I say mist. It's more of a fog. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's like obscuring vision pretty successfully. Okay. Gotcha. Well, Giro, maybe it's been too long since you've stood on the wall, but what you speak of is the Gasha de Kuro. We haven't seen a Gasha de Kuro in the Empire in, gosh, three, four. 500 years? I mean, I've trust me, I've read about them in plenty of books. We've got manuals on how to tear these things apart, but clearly you know more than I do, Asawa. So, um, the next one that comes across I'll let you... The Kami are in much imbalance these days as some new attempt to rise and those begin to follow them. You think the Kami are imbalanced because I want a clan? Because I want to give the free people of Rokugan a name to sit under? No, the Kami aren't imbalanced because of that. Yama only desires peace for our people. As you think. But clearly you said, I'm much more knowledgeable of these situations than you are. Well, as much fun as it is to squabble with lesser samurai, and yes, <laughs> Isawa, I did say lesser samurai. Lord Okoto, I must... My station is still higher than yours, Ronan. Well, that is... Uh, you may have been a former champion. Perhaps perhaps slightly true, but uh, Isawa, I could return to the crab any day and kick your ass, and no one would bat an eye. So, Lord Okoto... I'm going to travel to my home, and I'm going to ask for some troops to be sent this way, just in case we see another of these maddened skeleton monsters. And Isawa, I hope to see you again soon. The pleasure will be mine at that time. <laughs> I think you've got to roll, some, <laughs> roll something against the strike for that one. <laughs> that very unveiled threat of, I'm going to beat you with this Tetsubo. Or the, this, yeah, Tetsubo. Oh, let's see. Where should I go with this one? <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna say that I truly would be taking void stance on this one because I know that he's just gonna do nothing but attempt to insult me. I think you could also willingly take the strife if you wanted to. I don't want to willingly take the strife because <laughs> <laughs> I are. might stab him. <laughs> you might try. Only if you unmask. What does that number look like? You can choose not to unmask. Yeah, but that's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, the strife headed your way this time is another four. All right. It's a big, big, big number. Uh, and you're rolling void, and what is the skill you're going to roll? I'm guessing courtesy again? You could roll sentiment, I think would be okay. Could I roll sentiment, or could I basically, with the understanding that he knew that he's of a lower station than me, tell him very well, go ahead and go to your homelands and well, use command? Command. It'd still be a slight to him. I think with command, you could subvert that strife with opportunity, but not successes. 
Hmm. But you would be potentially giving him more strife. At risk of unmasking. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, at risk of reaching composure, you decide when to unmask. Now, if he gets the opportunity, he can't use them to both give him strife and reduce strife? Well, he can't give strife with the opportunity Ah, unless he rolls fire. I'll do it. You're on fire? No, I'm going to go ahead and do the void and um, do the command. command. Okay. Uh. Let's see. So I ignore the strife that's going on. I have three opportunities in a success. Okay. So you would you would potentially put one strife on him, uh, but the three opportunity lets you only take one strife yourself. So that's nice. It's pretty good. Um, he picks up this Tetsubo, which you thought was kind of a normally sized club, um, but as he picks it up, uh, you see that it kind of comes out of the ground. Uh, almost 18 inches. Like it had been slammed in a foot and a half. What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Give him like a weird look. Uh, so he pulls it out and throws it over his shoulder. And you see that this thing has uh, spines 8 to 12 inches long uh, lining it. This is an extremely important weapon. And I think that your character in particular, maybe both of you even, uh, would immediately recognize this as uh, Hida's Tetsubo. It's a family heirloom being carried around by Grio. Hida's Tetsubo? Mm-hmm. Hida Kesada's Tetsubo? Yes. Hida Kesada's Tetsubo. Which is probably why he was able to take down that giant skeleton monster. Did he take it down, or did he just drive it off? Oh, no, he took it down. Like, that's what all of these half-decaying bodies all over the ground ah. are the remnants of the uh, the demon. Um, he kind of gives you a nod. It says, uh, as you say so. <clears throat> we'll meet again. I have a feeling fairly soon. Um, Okoto, look out for those crab troops. They will send them. We're not going to let the Shadowlands taint reach any further than Oiku and Toshi Rambo. We've got to stop this here. I know you know that's true. I'm sorry for the men of yours that I killed. One day I'll repay you. Do you guys say anything to that? We shall meet again. Uh, you look at Okoto and he's watching you two and he you can tell he's like fuming trying to hold himself together at this point Mm -hmm. Um, because he's he's been kind of watching this encounter and uh, witnessing it take place and how he's talking to you guys and how you're talking to him and uh, he slightly nods knowing that what he's saying is true and as uh, Griot turns around he gathers his troops it takes about a good um, 20 minutes for him to gather everything and for them to start marching off um, and the entire time Okoto is motionless well it would be bad form for us to speak for him right that's why it's like yeah. no oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. for sure well a question um, even though I'm not there so his troops flags. are they dressed up as crane or are they all dressed up in wolf clan oh they're they're dressed as crane okay mm. Giro before you leave what are you familiar with why these crane appear to be attacking? And I'll say crane very snidely. Yeah, like in air quotes. <laughs> Just so he knows that I know they're not crane. Oh, um, uh, because I uh, told them to. That'd be primarily why. And you sent them as crane, why? Well, to start a war? Because we're representing the crane. Under whose authority? We were hired by the Kakita Magistrate. He gave us the robes. And I assume you have proof of this? Other than your word? He holds out a a bag with the Crane Clan Mon that he jingles. It's clearly full of coins. Yeah. Puts it back on his belt. (sighs) 
I'll look back over at, at um, Kikita. I think we have much to discuss in private. I think so. And he, uh, Okoto, looks at both of you and nods. And then looks back toward Toshi Rainbow as if, like, you should probably go back. What do you do? Do you guys stay and talk to Grio some more, or do you let him leave? I'm gonna let, we'll let him leave. leave. And let things, yeah. Unless Okoto wants to stop him. If Okoto wants to stop him, we'll assist Okoto, but if Okoto lets him leave, then... No, Okoto, Okoto lets go. him go, uh, for now, anyway. Mm-hmm. Knowing that he does need the Crab Clan's help if there are Shadowlands monsters about. Mm-hmm. Um, and knowing that he can probably get that assistance sent down. Um, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> um, do you guys head back to Toshi Rambo or do you want to talk to Okoto before you leave? Totally up to you. I think you have, even though he did kind of nod that direction, I think you have some grounds to mm-hmm. make a at least a brief conversation happen. Yeah. I would just say that I would find that Grio person's words offensive if I thought they had any weight. Perhaps. His wave riders will pay soon enough. But I need his family. For now. If his family, if he has walked away from his family, then the crab that show up may be very similar to the crane that showed up earlier. And we will be ready if they do. Perhaps an emissary could go on my behalf to ensure that honesty is held at the court of Kyudenhida. But I do not know if I know anyone who has that capability. If, if you wish it, Lord Okoto, we could be your emissaries. Can you leave the employ of the Emerald Magistrate that you spoke with? The Emerald Magistrate is a he to himself. I am fairly certain we could get his blessing in this endeavor. If you He's can actually a heater. <laughs> he did charge us with this investigation, and this investigation does seem to be growing. If you receive his blessing, then I would appreciate it greatly. 